Today we're going to look at a function that's really important in a branch of number theory known as analytic number theory, and this function is the Dirichlet eta function. So let's see how it's defined. So eta of s is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n to the s. So this looks kind of like an alternating version of the famous Riemann zeta function. And in fact, this is like what I'll call a friend to the Riemann zeta function, which is, well, the same thing without the alternating bit. But given that, we can write the eta function in terms of the zeta function. So I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's look at some values of this function first before we look at our main goal. So eta of zero is equal to one half. But if you write that in terms of the definition, that's one minus one plus one minus one plus one, so on and so forth. This is known as Grandi's series. Of course, that does not converge. And then eta of minus one is equal to a quarter. But if you plug that into the series definition, you get the alternating sum of natural numbers. And so this is not taking this definition, but some sort of analytic continuation of this definition. So that's what's really going on here with these two values. So we can look at that more later if you guys would like to. Now, eta of one is the natural log of two. Well, that's just the alternating harmonic series. And this is how this thing starts to differ from the zeta function. Recall that the zeta function does not converge when s is equal to one. In fact, the only place that it cannot be analytically continued is the maybe vertical line in the complex plane where the real part of s is equal to one. But that portion's okay over here with the eta function. And then we've got these other two values which are easily calculated from the values of the zeta function. So I think I've derived the values of the zeta function on the channel before for zeta of two and zeta of four. And so we can easily get eta of two and eta of four using this over here. Okay, so now that we know what the eta function is, let's move into our main result of this video, which is calculating its derivative at one. So like I said, our main goal is to look at the derivative of the eta function at one. Well, let's notice using this maybe pretty easy way of rewriting one over n to the s as e to the minus s times the natural log, we get the derivative of the eta function at like an arbitrary parameter s is this alternating sum of the natural log of n over n to the s. So I think that's a pretty interesting sum in its own right. Okay, so let's get to it. And we're gonna do this with a pretty interesting sequence. So let's define this sequence. We'll call it f of n. And it'll be defined as the sum as m goes from one to n of the natural log of m over m minus, well, some other stuff. And that other stuff is one half the natural log of n squared. So I'll, that's how I'll write the natural log of n squared. First, we'll prove that this converges, and we'll prove that it converges by using something called the Cauchy integral test. And that is, we'll look at the limit of something that corresponds to like maybe a continuous function version of this. Whereas we think about f of n as like a discrete function. So what would a continuous function be? Well, a sum would be replaced with an integral. So we wanna look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from one to n. So that's where I replaced that sum with an integral. And now we have the natural log of x over x dx. And then from that, we need to subtract one half natural log of n squared. But now let's look in at this integral and notice that it's actually fairly easy to calculate. This is something you would maybe do in the first couple weeks of learning integration. And so we could do a u substitution, like perhaps we would set u equal to the natural log of x. That'll make du equal to dx over x. And then our integral will become what? Well, it'll become the integral from, 
let's see, it'll be zero up to the natural log of n of u du. But notice that pretty clearly gives us one half natural log of n squared. Oh, but if this thing that I've overlined in magenta is one half natural log of n squared, and we're subtracting that off, that means these two things cancel. So those two things cancel. We're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of zero, so we simply get zero. So the continuous version of this sequence converges, but then, like I said, by Cauchy's integral test, the sequence itself converges. So let's write that down here. So we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of f of n equals l. In other words, it converges. So I guess I mean that L is a real number. In other words, it's not minus or plus infinity. Okay, so next up we're gonna rewrite F of N in this like kind of clever way, which will lead us to our simplification. So let's just copy over what we have first. So we have the sum as M goes from one to N of the natural log of M over M, and we're subtracting off that half natural log of N squared object. But now we're gonna use maybe a logarithm rule. And that logarithm rule is the natural log of two times m is the natural log of m plus the natural log of two. Because a logarithm will turn a product into a sum. But what can I do? I can flip this thing around and solve for the natural log of m and here we'll have the natural log of 2m minus the natural log of 2. So that'll be like one of the tricks here that we use for this simplification. So let's see, I'm gonna rewrite this as 2 times the sum as m goes from 1 to n of the natural log of 2m over 2m. So that's from this first bit. Notice I just multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 2. And then we'll have minus the natural log of two, and then the sum as m goes from one to n of one over m. So that's from this bit right here. We've got this little bit of a harmonic series, or this is not like the infinite harmonic series, but a partial sum of the harmonic series. And then from that, we need to subtract off my one half natural log of n squared. So that's this like interesting way of rewriting this. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so we've been working with the following sequence, f of n, that we defined like this blue box over here. We also were able to rewrite it in the following form. And now we're gonna look at the following difference. We'll look at f evaluated at 2n minus f evaluated at n. So let's notice that since we know that this converges to a finite number, then, or our, I should say our sequence f of n converges to a finite number, then as we let n go to infinity here, this thing converges to zero. And that's actually gonna be really important for kind of what we do at the end. But before we get there, we need to make our calculation. And so the trick is to use our original definition for f evaluated at 2n and our new way of rewriting it with f evaluated at n. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll have the sum as m goes from one to two times n of the natural log of m over m minus, now we'll have one half natural log of two times n squared. Okay, so that's our f evaluated at two times n. But before we move on, I'm gonna take this term right here, this natural log squared of two times n, and I'm gonna rewrite it using logarithm rules. So I'll rewrite this as the natural log of n plus the natural log of two quantity squared. That's just gonna to add to some simplification here. Okay, but now when I subtract off my f of n, I'll use this version right here. So let's see, I'll have minus two times the sum as m goes from one up to n of the natural log of 2m over 2m. And then these minuses will turn into pluses. So let's see, that'll be plus 
natural log of two, and then we have this partial sum of the harmonic series. This is also known as a harmonic number, which we've done on the channel before. And then plus one half natural log squared of n. Okay, nice. Okay, so now before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna take this object right here and expand it over here in this box because I'll get some nice simplification. Okay, so let's see, I'll have minus one half natural log squared of n, so that's from the first term, and then minus natural log of two times natural log of n, so that's from the cross term. Notice squaring it out will give us a two, but then multiplying by minus a half will give us a minus one. And then finally, minus one half natural log squared of two. Okay, so that's what we have from like expanding that out. And maybe I'll cross this out because that's what we're replacing this with. But look, I have some nice simplification here. I have this minus half natural log squared and this minus half natural log squared. So this term will cancel with that term. Then I'm gonna start putting some things together. So I'll put this thing that I'm underlining in green kind of nearby this thing over here that I'm underlining in green as well. And then I'll notice that this object right here is the sum of all of the terms from one to two n. Whereas this object right here is the sum of only the even terms from one to two n. But I'm subtracting two of them off. But that's gonna turn all of the even terms negative, which is gonna give us an alternating sum. So just to reiterate, combining these two terms will give us a nice alternating sum. So let's start to write that down. Okay. So we'll have the sum as m goes from one up to two times n of, well, let's see, I said I needed the even terms to be negative because we're subtracting two of those off. So we have minus one to the m plus one and then natural log of m over m. So like I said, that's from this combination right here. Great. Then let's see, let's put those green underlines together as well. So we'll have plus natural log of two, and then we'll have the sum as m goes from one up to n of one over m minus the natural log of n. It's important to notice that that minus natural log of n is outside of the sum. And then we've got one more term, which is this. So minus half natural log squared of two. But now we'll apply our limit to this object and then we're essentially done. Okay, so let's maybe put an underline here and then we'll, like I said, apply our limit as n goes to infinity to this object. Keeping in mind that we really get zero on the one hand, but then we'll get some nice structure to this like magenta underline thing. Okay, so when we let n go to infinity, that'll turn this finite sum to an infinite sum. And notice that we'll have ex almost exactly what we have over here with s equal to one. It's just our alternating is off by a little bit. We can fix that by changing this m minus one to the m plus one to just minus one to the m and bring this minus sign outside. So that bit right there will give us minus eta prime of one and then we'll have plus natural log of two, and then this stuff that I have overlined in purple, that limit is a famous constant known as the euler mascheroni constant. We've done that on the channel before, and that's denoted by gamma, and then that's just a constant over there, so minus one-half natural log squared of two. But notice we also know that the limit is zero, like I pointed out before. So that means that zero is equal to this stuff right here, allowing us to solve for the derivative of the eta function at one. And that'll give us eta prime of one is gamma times the natural log of two minus one half natural log squared of two. And that's that famous value of, like I said, the derivative of the eta function at one. And that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.